We are live now, everybody. Welcome to Recon. Today is Monday, February 5th, and you get the B team today because Denny's on a plane. So, off and running, our first one out of the gate is Barclay. What are we doing today, bud? Um, door knocking neighbors for a buyer. I just got on the contract. We have multiple, they have multiple offers to change it like the elect another buyer. I mean, another seller. All right. Excellent. You are door knocking in a neighborhood where you have multiple offers on a listing, right? No, I have the buyer. So I'm trying you to, have the you buyer. Know, okay. Terrific. Yeah. And, uh, let's see, you know what? We're just going to write down the line. Arne is going to be who's answering the door. Let's do two minutes on a door knock. Let's see how it goes. Ready? Go. All right. Knock, knock. Hello. Good morning. My name is Barclay. I'm a local real estate agent. Um, the reason why I'm here is because we actually just got your neighbor on the contract, and we have a lot of people who's thinking about who's looking to move into the neighborhood. And I just want to know: Do you or anybody you know is thinking about like you know selling their home, moving somewhere else? Soon? Um, not that I know of. No, you uh, know. we we've only been here for a couple of years, so we're staying. Okay, I understand that completely. And what brought you to this neighborhood? Uh, it's just, it's a beautiful neighborhood. We just love it here. Definitely. My buyer do love it. Um, I know that you, you're not thinking about making any moves, but I know a lot of the neighbors are asking for, um, to be part of like the neighborhood. Um, a lot of neighbors are asking to be updated monthly about what's going on in the neighborhood. Would you, would you love to be on part of that list too? Um, sure. Yeah. I always like to know what's going on. Okay, perfect. And what's the best email I can reach you at? Um, Arne is amazing at gmail.com. Arne is amazing at gmail.com. All right, perfect. And if you know anybody else that's thinking about making a move, um, I'll definitely will be texting you with my contacts so that way you can put me in contact with them too. Fantastic. Yeah, sure. All right. Thank you for your time. Excellent. Minute, just under a minute 30. Barclay, what'd you like about that? Um, I ain't give up even though I messed up in my head. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Great job. Is there anything that you can look back and say, hey, maybe I do this just a little bit different or ask a different question? Um, I asked her what brought her to the neighborhood. Um, no, I asked her how long she's been here. Um, okay. I asked her she knew. So you asked a, a, a it was a good question let's massage it a little bit you asked you know are you or any of your neighbors thinking about moving that's a yes mm -hmm. no question right how about changing around a little bit so aren't i who's the next neighbor that you know is thinking of moving well i don't, I don't really know don't don't even make it about her don't even ask if she's thinking about say who's which one of your neighbors is going to move next uh, I, I don't thinking. know who's moving, but I know that uh, the people across the street are having another baby, and they're always talking about how rooms getting tight. There you go. So there, there's your next target. You go right across the street. And another question, you, you know, you asked her what brought her. She said, "We really like the neighborhood. Awesome. What's your favorite part of living here?" And it's not necessarily anything other, there's no other reason for that, is you're gaining information about why people find this neighborhood special that you can incorporate as you go forward with your door knocking campaign. And John? Yo. Oh, Don is I, here. Thank you. Didn't see him. I was there at 730. I, I would, <laughs> and I, he did a great job. I would also say, oh, and who else do you know amongst your friends that don't live here? that would love to move in this neighborhood and enjoy the same amenities that you're enjoying. That's exactly why I'm knocking on your door. Who else do you know that wants to come? That's a great question, Don. Thank you for throwing that into the mix. Love that. It, it does a few things. Everyone else is knocking on doors is trying to get RNA to list. What you're doing is trying to enhance RNA's life by bringing people in and either her helping care. neighbors or her helping friends. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Great job. Arne, you are next. And Louise is your target. What are we doing? Uh, I am also doing door knocking for um, several open houses. We're doing mega open houses, multiple for Super Bowl and the whole week. Awesome. 
so, big open house day. Don't let next Sunday fool you. All right, Arne, two minutes. Let's go. Uh, knock, knock. Hello. Hi, uh, my name's Arne. I am with the Bush Realty Group. I was just stopping by because I wanted to let you know, I want to invite you to our open house at 123 Main Street, right down the street. Um, it's in your community. And I wanted to know if you had any friends who are looking to get into this neighborhood. Um, we actually just moved in here ourselves. So we're still learning about the neighbors. Oh, really? That's fantastic. What brought you over here? The school district. Oh, I should have mentioned this is a retirement community. <laughs> we wanted to get, so the school is we wanted to get out of this, out of the school districts where those troublesome kids were, were not so great because we like quiet and peace. Then you moved to the right place. Um, did you, did you move from out of state? Uh, no, we're, we're interstate. I don't know why I asked you that question. Um, I got thrown off by the school district. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, would you mind if I um, gave you some information and kept you updated on what's going on with the open houses? Uh, I, no, not too interested since we we have no interest in looking. Got it. No problem. I, I don't know where to go from there because I wasn't prepared. All right, it's a minute and a half. What about inviting me to the open house? <laughs> I yep. did. That was the first thing I, I said. I that. said I wanted to invite you. I didn't you get to that. It was just a long, there was just a lot of words. Yep. There was. There was too many so, words. Arne, a couple things. First of all, yes. she threw you for a loop by throwing out a school district. You weren't expecting it. Okay. Yeah. This is a think on your feet opportunity. Okay. You you need to step right out of you're in a 55-year-old and older community. It's like, oh, what about the school district cites you? Because now you're going to start finding out, are we concerned about athletics? Are we concerned about uh, uh, academics? Are we concerned about uh, acting? What, what, what is it about the school that attracted them? Again, building an arsenal of information that the neighbors like. And yes. I agree with Louise. You need more clarity around the, the Super Bowl party. Say, so, hey, you know what? We're having a Super Bowl party open house, and I wanted to personally invite you. You're face-to-face -face with somebody. Got it. Be extremely conversational. Man, we're having a party and you're invited. Nice. And maybe in your it. mind, it, it would help. And I don't know if this is a good idea or a bad idea, but maybe think about it. Having like a certain number of words that you say and then you stop and pause because there are just a lot of words before there's yes. an opportunity for the other person to speak. Yes. Yep. And everybody keep that in mind. The shorter, now don't ask two or three word sentences of questions, but the shorter you and quicker you can get your point across on the question, the easier it's going to be for your prospect to be able to process and respond appropriately. Otherwise they just start filtering out, filtering out, filtering out. Now this is a waste of my time. Thank you very much. Close the door next. All right. Some, somebody Louise. noticed Don. Somebody John, noticed John, Don. John, just one comment, two comments. You, Our neighbor, two comments, because, maybe because three. There were a lot of, because there were a lot of words there were a lot of ums and uhs in there. And it's okay to ask where they move from, but rather than say, did you move from out of state? Yeah, as soon as I said it, I was like, no. No, that, no, that is a great question to ask. Oh, you just moved in. Where did you move from? They're going to answer that 99% of the times rather than did you move from in-state or out-state? Because you could be wrong. Hey, where did you move from? That's my Got it. Thanks. Yep. And, and that goes right back to the turn it into an open-ended question, not a yes, no. Got right? it. Thank you. All right, Louise, what are I'm we doing? I'm reading a script to Dr. Lauren, who has this exact same script from the exact same book. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Are you ready, Dr. Lauren? Ring, ring. Hello? Hey, Dr. Lauren, it's Louise. Did I catch you at a good time, or would you like to call me back later? Oh, uh, you can call me back later. Okay, great. Ring, ring. <laughs> Hello? Hey, Dr. Lauren, is this a better time for you? This is a better time. Thank you. Okay, great. Hey, I know you said, the last time we spoke, I know you said you wanted to wait until spring to sell, and I just wanted to share some um, 
knowledge with you about what's going on in the market right now and how it affects you today. Okay. Great, great. Um, did you know that the experts are predicting that the interest rates will continue to rise? And what do you think that means for you? Um, you know, I'm not sure. I've actually heard kind of the opposite. I heard that interest rates were dropping. Follow the script, my friend. You have it. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Higher interest <laughs> rates mean that buyers have less money to work with when purchasing a home, which means that less buyers will be able to afford your home, right? Oh, don't erase the right because I'm going to get dinged on that. <laughs> um, well, I guess, I guess you bring up a good point. Mm-hmm. And also, did you know that the highest amount of homes come on the market in March and April? Yes, yes, that I did know. So you could actually get a head start in January and have less sellers to compete with. Okay. And um, I understand that moving in the winter is, isn't that, I understand that moving in the winter isn't what you had originally planned. And if you knew that by selling or buying in January meant that you aren't actually moving until March or April, would that fit your schedule better? Hmm, maybe. It sounds like like um, we should get together and I can share with you in 15 minutes what that timeline would look like. Are you available um, this afternoon or is tomorrow afternoon better? 15 minutes, that's all it's going to take? Time. Yep. Sounds like you got the appointment right at the two minute mark. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so, Louise, <laughs> how many I know. times? Not everyone is going to follow a script. I know. <laughs> how many? How many times when you call somebody, are they reading the exact same script? I knew it as soon as I said it. I was just doing that <laughs> to Dr. Lauren. We've had some yeah. slide <laughs> I wouldn't do and, that. And Lauren, anymore. great job throwing the curveball because she teed you up. And you're like, no, we're not going to left field. We're going to go way deep right into <laughs> 10 rows deep into the bleachers. So good job on that. Um, first, when practicing scripts, guys, practice scripts that are in the market of the moment. Do we think that rates are going up or down this year? They're expected right? to get more. Rates are likely to go down. Pred pred predictions are as much as six times this year. So... When practicing scripts, practice scripts that are in the market of the moment. Not looking to pick on you, Louise. Sorry, just that it's <laughs> let's let's go down. Let's stick with the what's happening in the market now. Now the other thing, Louise, tonality. Remember, ask the, the questions. I called it. End on a down. All right. End it yeah. with confidence. All right. End it. End it with confidence. Awesome. I, and I love the fact that you're out there demonstrating different scripts and i really love the fact that lauren threw you for a loop because that's exactly what happens uh when you're sitting down with somebody face to face and i've actually said to somebody when they get off script like wait a second no we're supposed to be following this you're on page three i'm always i'm still on page one we'll get to there uh just to help keep things in line now that's when i first started you you're gonna want to learn to be able to pivot and be able to bounce from page one to page three back to two and into 17 when they when they take you there Fine. does that make sense Yes, yeah. That's awesome. Why we practice? Thank you. And All tomorrow, right. Lauren, like Doctor Lauren, Lauren. Oh, go ahead, Louise. What's oh, that? Tomorrow, I'd like to. I would like to go after Lauren and be her role play partner. Be prepared. <laughs> uh, we'll make. We'll make that happen. I love what, that. What I love that. Payback. <laughs> Payback. All right, yeah. Doctor Lauren Goodwin. All right, Joe let's Barnes do... is your target. What are we doing? We're gonna do some expireds. All right, Joe Barnes, you are the expired target. Ready, set, go. All right, ring, ring. Hello. Hi, this is Dr. Lauren Goodwin, realtor with Keller Williams. How are you doing today? I'm good. Uh, who's this? Uh, Dr. Lauren Goodwin. I'm a realtor with Keller Williams, and I'm calling because I noticed that your house was for sale, but is no longer on the market. Have you completely given up on selling your home? I don't know what you're talking about. It's still on the market. It's still for sale. Oh, interesting. Well, it, it's showing up in my system as, as if it expired, uh, which we, we call it uh, last night at, at 12 at twelve midnight. Did your realtor not um, reach out to you about that? No. Uh, so, you, can, can you call Kathy? Uh, so I would love to call Kathy. Just a quick question. Are you still interested in selling the home? Uh, yes, definitely. Fantastic. Well, 
Um, I'm not sure if I have a buyer yet. I would love to take a look at your property since you are interested in selling it. Would it be possible for me to come by later this afternoon or tomorrow at four? Uh, well, we, uh, I, I probably feel better if you talked with Kathy. Okay. Uh, well, technically you don't have a relationship with Kathy or a, a professional relationship with Kathy because last night your listing expired. And so that contract is now over. So I would love to come by and speak with you and then, um, see how I can help you get the home sold since it does seem like that's something that's still of interest to you. Uh, okay. What are you going to do for me that Kathy didn't? Uh, well, I would love to come by and explain that to you. Uh, one of the things that I'll definitely go do is communicate with you with things that are going on with your home, especially if there has been some changes and it doesn't, uh, you know, I'm not sure if Kathy was able to do that, but communication is one of the biggest things. And then of course, getting your home sold. So um, is it okay if I come by a Tuesday at four o'clock? Uh, I don't know. Can I call you back? Uh, sure. What would you be thinking about in the meantime? Well, you know, I, I need to talk with my wife and also I, I want to call Kathy because, you know, she's a friend of the family. I, I totally understand. Oh. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Two minutes. Dr. Lauren. Yes. Good job. What did you, what did you do well? Um, I think I, I kept on my script well enough. I informed him about, you know, his home and, and being frank about it being no longer on the market. Um, kept them on the phone, which I think was mm -hmm. good. Um, and then tried to close this as soon as I possibly could without necessarily going through a bunch of other questions. Okay, excellent. Joe, was there something you were looking for that would have gotten the appointment? Um, I, I think the assumption that I don't have a relationship with my agent is uh, sort of gave me a red flag. He would ask me okay. about that and ask me why I didn't um, get a call from my agent already and wedge it that way, that probably would have done it. Okay. So I picked up on that also. Uh, I'm fine tuning that. I, I need to find a, a, a softer way to, to say that how about the relationship. Your, so, so Joe, how did you choose your last agent? Oh, it's my wife's best friend. Okay, perfect. Now you know what you're up against, right, Dr. Lauren? Yep. yep. The conversation changes when it's your wife's best friend versus somebody that they had never met who beat them up on the phone last time just to get the appointment. Got it. Okay. At that point, now you have the information you need to pivot to a softer landing. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and I have a question. <clears throat> Go ahead, Barkley. Um, when we use words like expired or came off the market, is that good words to talk to the consumer about? Because sometimes they might not understand what we mean. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, you, you might want to consider changing it to your your home is no longer available to interested buyers. Because that's what they care about is interested buyers. Okay. When, when we start using our own vernacular and our own jargon, it can be confusing because not everybody plays in this arena every single day. Right. Make sense? Mm -hmm. hey, John. Awesome. John. Yo, when, Don Aldridge when, again. When, yes. When someone when someone says, "Well, what are you going to do to sell my home that Kathy didn't?" Instead of going into a lot of sentences, I would have just said, and you did say it, but you said it at the very end. I would just say, "I'm going to sell you a home." When would be a good time to get together? Yep, there's okay. one, one way to handle it, and, and personally, you know how I handle it. Is, yeah. I don't. I don't know what Kathy did. It'd be yeah. a lot easier to discuss this face to face. Very good. Nice. I know what Kathy didn't do. I am not going to reiterate because everybody knows Kathy didn't sell the home. Me personally, I'm going to say, you know what? I'm not sure. When we meet, you can show me everything she did, and let's look to see what we can do better. Good. Thank you. I like that. Yeah. All right. Joe Barnes, you are, you are going yes. to be reaching out to Steve Patternack. Okay. With Brian um, and Steve comes off mute, and he, and he is off mute. Awesome. What are we doing? I'm here. Expired. All right. Perfect. Two minutes. Ready, set, go. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, good morning. Uh, this is Joe Barnes from Keller Williams Realty. Uh, is this the owner of 123 Main Street? Uh, yeah, it is. How you doing? 
I'm doing well. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I was calling because I saw your house just came off the market and I was wondering what your plans are for it now that it's no longer listed for sale. Yeah, I mean, it just didn't move. So, I mean, I'm not really too sure what the plans are, to be honest. My agent's supposed to actually come by here, you know, next weekend so we can talk about it. Okay, great. Um, can I ask if someone did still want to buy it, would you still be interested in selling it? Uh, yeah, I got Yeah, I got to get out of here. Okay. Uh, if it's sold in the next 30 days, would that be too soon? No, that's actually would be perfect. I mean, I don't think 30 days is actually realistic, but I mean, I have a, a new job that I'm starting uh, in July. So I, I got to start figuring out what the next move is. And I can't buy the next house until I sell this one. Awesome. When are you interviewing new agents? Well, I'm not really sure I am. You know, uh, you know, my agent, he he explained to me that there's just a lot of uncertainty in the market right now. And I'm just not, you know, so maybe that's probably why it didn't sell. So that's why we're going to meet next week. Okay. And if it could still sell right now, you would sell it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. If I could show you how to get this sold right now, regardless of what the market's doing, would that be worth 15 minutes of your time? I'm kind of loyal to this guy, you know, like I, I, I've known him for a long time and, you know, he helped my daughter rent an apartment, you know, like six months ago. So I, I don't really know if I'm looking to interview other people. That makes sense. And I don't want to step on toes here. Uh, would you ever consider getting a second opinion? My wife tells me I should, but I'm not so sure. You know, I'm kind of torn. Well, you don't owe me anything because I'm just calling you out of the blue and you don't owe anyone anything. I'm sure you would agree that you probably owe yourself and your family the very best to get this sold, right? Time. All right. <clears throat> so, Joe, <laughs> Steve, <laughs> Steven sound really fun on the phone. All right. <laughs> He's giving you everything he needs. The very His very last statement at about a minute 52, my wife told me I should interview somebody else. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going on the energy of the call. I'm like, man, Stephen, you ever hear of happy wife, happy life? Right. That's why we, if nothing else, Stephen, that's why we need to meet. And you can at least tell your wife, hey, I met with somebody else or we met with somebody <laughs> else. All right. Okay. It opened it up. I, I would have I hit that with a big freaking sledgehammer. Boom. Right there because he teed that one up for you. Stephen, was there anything else you were looking for in that? I think that it was it was smooth. I, I think that um, I could tell he had the same type of energy that I do when I, when when I'm on the phone. And um, yeah, no, I think it was uh, I think it was well played. And the last thing I was going to say before you call time was I was going to be like, "Wow, you're a good salesman," because that last line <laughs> I don't remember what it was, but he said something, and right there, honestly, like I would have definitely booked the appointment right there. Excellent. Excellent. Good job, Joe. Way to stick with it. Awesome. Hey, John. All right, Steven, you're up. Okay. And Frank is your target. Did you want to say hey, something? Oh. Yeah. What would have been a good pain question to ask? Okay. Yeah, Joe, you got to be out of here in 30 you. days. Where, where are you going? What brings you there? That's the other what direction. If, what if the house doesn't sell in 30 days? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, what was and him, the pain question would have been about him not getting that job. Yeah, but he had a job coming yeah. soon. You you got to be there. What happens if you don't can't get there? No, oh, I don't have a choice. Well, he he also said I'm going to wait till next weekend to speak with my agent. Wrote yeah, that I, down I, too. Why the delay? You got 30 days. You're going to wait until next yeah, weekend. Yeah. Right. I threw that in there for purpose. No, awesome. All right, Stephen. Okay, you got Frank. All right. Frank, Frank, Frank. All right, cool. All right, ring, ring. Oh, I'm well, sorry. What I'm am, doing, I, what am I supposed to think? For sale by owner. Okay. Start again. Okay. Sorry about that. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm calling about the home for sale. Is this uh, Robert? Yeah. Hey, Robert, how are you? Um, my name is Steven. I'm a real estate agent here in the area, and I noticed that you have your home for sale. Um, You're selling it yourself, correct? That's it. You got a buyer? So I, I possibly um I decided to give you a call today because I've helped a lot of for sale by owners in the area. Um I was just calling to see how things are going for you. You know, you sound like all these other agents. I may possibly have a buyer. Either bring a buyer or don't waste my time. Well, I can appreciate that. Believe me, I understand. Um, do you mind if I just ask you a couple more questions? 
Your time. <laughs> so when you do sell this home, where is it you're going to be moving to? I got another house in, in South Carolina. Okay. And what's your ideal time frame for getting down there? Whenever I get there, no rush. Okay. And I'm just curious, why is it you decided to lift the home yourself instead of using a real estate agent? Well, I had it listed with two other agents and they both lied to me and just took money from me. Wow. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, You say they took money from you? What do you mean by that? Well, every every time I talk to them, they say, oh, well, we got this fee. We got that fee. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Well, um, if I'm able to show you how I could sell you this home um, and put more money in your pocket instead of taking it out of that, is that something that you would be interested in looking at right now? I have absolutely no trust in realtors. Interesting. Um, if, if there was some way that I could sit with you and just kind of maybe try to build that trust, uh, is that something that would make sense for you? Not at this time. Not at this time. Okay. Well, um, I don't even know where to go from there. Time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where to go from there. I was trying right. to do what you guys had said, which is have a script in front of me. Normally, I just kind of freestyle these things. Yep. So I was trying to like use a script, but it didn't really turn out so well. Well, Stephen, like you, did Frank put the... you did a great you, you... job, Stephen. I, I thought was, you did great, Stephen. Very, very tough on you. You did a great job. <laughs> and Frank put in the chat earlier, people that you're talking to don't have the script that you have, so they don't know what to follow. And he was playing along with that. So excellent. A couple quick things. Uh, and I know in some areas you don't have to do this, but general practice, make sure you identify the company you're with. Okay. Oh, this is Stephen with Keller Williams. Uh, when you say a local real estate agent, it can put up a barrier of trust right away. And boy, did Frank have a barrier, man. He's got like the Great Wall of China protecting him right there. Um, Stephen, why is he selling? He said he was moving down to South Carolina. Okay. Well, why is he selling? He already has a house in South Carolina. I asked him where he was going. I didn't ask him why he was actually selling. <laughs> So Frank, you've got you've got your house in South Carolina already. Why sell this one? Okay. The actual motivation. Absolutely. Because you you don't know now. Listen, well, I'm going to play some jokes here because this is typical Frank. You know, Frank could be selling his house so he could buy a boat so he could go to the Bahamas and spend his time on the beach. All right. And now okay. his place in South Carolina could be on the ocean. So, and I'm saying that because Frank has used the beach analogies a number of times. I don't know if he was going to bring that out. However, until you know the motivation for selling a house that he does not have to sell in order to accomplish his moving goal, you don't have leverage to be able to dig in. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Because you know, something, so, something else you could have done at that point, too. It suggests that maybe I keep it and use it as a rental property or investment property. I was just going to say, I, I normally would offer that also to say, hey, do you really have to sell? I mean, it's a great market for you to get some rental and maybe down the line, you know, build a relationship with them in the rapport to try to, you Excellent. Know. Excellent. Great job, everybody. This was a lot of fun for a Monday. You guys came to play. Everyone was well rested this weekend. Love it. We will see you guys again tomorrow. It is Telephone Tuesday. Everything we're doing is outbound calls. So bring your challenges, and we will go ahead and go over it all as a group. Looking forward to it. Have a great day. And to quote Denny, quoting Hill Street Blues, be careful out there. See you tomorrow. Take care, everybody.